the famed poison bullet. You can't eat it. So named because the round used by Soviet forces in Afghanistan Stupid was economy. absolutely devastating. The seven and six. Now there are newer rounds that are made by the Russian forces and that are used. However, do you know what the Russians don't have? Not poor people. Money. And because of that, and because of the massive amount of stores of 7N6, it is still the most prevalent round used by Russian forces. So today on Grand Thumb, we'll be testing how does the 7N6 perform in flesh? How does it perform on armor? How does it perform in general? Today on Grand Thumb, in Smash Barriers. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna smash with Grand Thumb. Now we have to mark a very momentous occasion. Um, Charlie has graduated from the Grantham School of Science and Biology and, and Doctors and is now a, a doctor, Dr. Charlie now. Does that mean I can go back to the library? No, no, Charlie doesn't. All right, come on. All right, just like we talked about, right arm, then left arm. Okay, now what do you have to say to the Sonoran Desert Institute? Thank you, Sonoran Institute. Sonoran, say Sonoran, say thank you. Sonoran. No, say thank you, Sonoran. Say thank, you. No, okay. thank you to the Sonoran Desert Institute, our biggest sponsor. We can't thank them enough. If you're looking to get into what? Do you Doctor. Watch okay, if you're looking to get into gunsmithing, a big thank you to them. We of course have to thank Zydex Computers for what? Computers. For gaming for our gaming channel. Thank you, Zydex. And of course, what, Micah? The Patreon. The Patreon. What is the Patreon? It's bussin'. It's, uh, sometimes it's not. It's bussin'. The point is, get in there. There are posts made by Micah. There are posts made by Charlie, both of which I'm very disappointed in. Um, I try to answer Why all the questions. Charlie does answer some questions as well. Um, if you get a bad one, you can message us um, at our private helpline. So right here, we have this AK-74 that was built down by Palmetto. It is a not really Soviet, you know, Afghan clone, but we do have the, of course, Soviet tourniquet on there with the bandage in there because it's kind of a vibe on itself. But if we come over here, we're going to be shooting the 7N6 into this clear ballistics gelatin from Ballistics Dummy Labs. We have to thank them, of course, for providing this. Big thank you to them. Big thank you. It's the best uh, ballistic gelatin. Now, we'll be filming all of this with our high-speed camera, which is going to get up to 1,600 frames per second to ensure that we can really see what those rounds are doing in the ballistics gelatin. One, one unknown fact is that during Vietnam, when we were stomping commies, this actually was not part of the regular kit that we carried over there. So um, it, it shouldn't differ, but this is probably the first time that gelatin has ever been shot. Now, when this round is developed, we of course have the direct competitor to the 7N6, which at the time was M855. So we're going to be firing this from the standard weapon of the time, which is of course the M16. This is an A4 variant, but we're going to get the same ballistics. And we have a grenade launcher on there because why, Charlie? Uh, so you could blow them up. Now, talk is cheap. Ammunition is expensive, so let's get into the test. Now, a big thank you to Norma for providing your ammunition. Clearly not the 7N6. Thank you, Norma. Very base. Now we're gonna be shooting this from seven yards and then we'll shoot it from 25. It should be noted that we should have roughly the same performance. In any case, let's get this going. Firing. All right, this is actually really interesting. And one of the reasons they call it the poison bullet, if you come take a look right here. So you can see we have fragmentation, a lot of yawing. So yawing means as that bullet begins to tumble, it's a very unstable round once it hits the tissue. And if you'll notice, that thing curved right out of the ballistics gelatin. A good curve is always something that you want to have because it allows it to get into different parts of the body. I'm very curved as well. I shoot it again a little bit higher to see if we can get a little bit more of the penetration on this particular gelatin. Now it should be noted like, that amount of curve and around is actually pretty crazy. That's some very, it's insane how unstable the round is once it hits tissue. It's pretty impressive to be honest. It's a very unstable round. And 
that is good penetration. And this thing was gonna keep going. Um, this is doing crazy things in the body. You can see where it exited right here. I mean, it's just a teeny little round, but man, that is, that truly does kind of blow my mind every time. Uh, I wanna put a round of M855 for comparison so you can see how that does in comparison to the 7N6. Yeah, as a medical doctor, uh, you could see the problems begin right here. Okay, we got M855 out of the M16. We're gonna see how this performs in the ballistic blocks which we flipped around. All right, we have the uh, M855, we have the slug right there if you wanna grab that. You can actually feel the heat on the side of the block from the uh, slug traveling through. <laughs> okay, so if we take a look at it, we can see the entrance of the M855, and you can see it's fairly stable in human tissue up until we have the complete fragmentation of the round as it explodes. There is a lot to be said about the performance out of a 20 inch barrel. That is pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't think, but let's not rule out the shorter barrels. They do a fun, they're pretty good. That's insane, wow. The MA55 performed hella good yeah. as well. Oh, is that the tip? Where? Now the MA55 was more of a kind of armor penetrating round, not so much armor penetrating as it would penetrate a lot of like helmets and that type of thing. You can see the penetrator right there. And then we have the uh, slug casing itself, which is what fragmented. Uh, just goes to show you, MA55 was designed for a 20 inch barrel and uh, God damn, does it perform? Yeah, actually when it, as you can see, uh, we studied this a lot. When the, when the bullet hits, it actually came apart. But one thing that we have to say about the AK is that we are also firing out of a 16 inch barrel. So very impressive performance out of that. What I'm interested to see at this point is what does it look like at 25? Let's assess a few more things with the 7 and 6. Okay, we are at 25 right now. I'm interested to see if we have the pretty much the same performance out of the 7 and 6. Let's check it out. Jeez. What is that? Every time, dude, this thing just, you can see it's very consistent. Uh, despite the distance, it does the same thing. That initial expansion immediately upon entry, then you immediately have that yong. In this case, this guy just yeeted straight for Elon Musk's Starlink right away. I wanna hit it one more time. I'm gonna try to hit it a little bit lower on this one. Sights are slightly high and left, and we'll uh, give this a shot. Charlie? Yeah, I think, that's, I think that distance is actually perfect because this is about the distance that the communists used to shoot each other in the back. So I feel like this is a great representation of them just being bad at everything. So this round is being super consistent in that you have that initial expansion, that round begins to tumble. It's having a tendency to want to go up. So we've went ahead and we've gone for broke. We've stacked all of our blocks up. We're hoping we can get that wound track through this upper one. Um, man, those rounds are really tumbling by that point. Like, especially you really have to consider it's a 16 inch barrel and it's doing that. Great performance, really, really great performance. I'll, I'll give it to the Russians. Yeah, I don't know if I would give them anything, but it is doing all right. Stacked blocks, see how it goes. We just watched the high speed on both of those. Legitimately a crazy round. Like that is some good that performance. That is actually psychotic. That was almost like a 90 degree. Yeah. Like up. And it that still was, had some speed when it popped That got, That thing had some power behind it. That's uh. That's not what, I did not think this was gonna perform as crazy as people said it, it did, but truly, this guy is outperforming what I thought it would. Now, with that being said, when I was in college, I actually bought an AK-105 clone, one of those arsenals. You remember those back in the day, Micah? Yeah, when they were like 500 bucks. Yeah, they were like 500 bucks. Everyone's like, oh, they suck. They didn't, they were actually awesome. Um, and I bought it simply because 545 by 39, specifically seven and six, this round was so cheap. I could buy a tin of 1080 for about 70 bucks, like literally 70 or less cent, or excuse me, literally seven or less cents a round. And I could shoot a thousand rounds in a day. And it was no problem, especially on a college budget, it was awesome. Now, 
What happened is in 2016, the ATF determined that this was an armor piercing round that could be fired from a pistol because of course some people made these into pistols and that type of thing. And they determined that the seven and six was a armor piercing round because it had a mild steel penetrator. Funny enough, the mild steel penetrator was simply done to save money. Classic Russians, it just made a great round. But what I'm interested in is they, the ATF says that this round is armor piercing. I highly doubt that. So we're gonna shoot some armor and see what happens. The ATF doesn't have any weapon experts, but they do have me. And I'll never work for the ATF, and I'll do everything I can to disband them. In any case, we're gonna test to see if this round is actually armor piercing. We have soft body armor that is level three from Safe Life Defense. Uh, thank you for the armor, and we're gonna, we're gonna shoot it now. And the, one of the biggest threats that I believe the ATF saw in this round is they were worried that people would, would take it out hunting uh, their bulls because a lot of ATF agents have bulls or their wives have bulls. So they were afraid that people would actually go out and start taking down these bulls. Um, that's words. Soft armor, level three, seven and six. Well, you know, this is supposed to be a much more involved test because uh, yeah, I thought this was armor-piercing ammunition. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they, they designed this round, the communists actually designed this round to penetrate level three innocent farmer. So it's, it's, I, I feel like once again, they've lied. Oh yeah, so as you can see, uh, we have the entrance wound. It did some crazy stuff like it usually does. It, of course, bulged in the back. We have a sizable bulge there if you want to feel that, Charlie. Okay, that's, that's huge. But it, it didn't penetrate, so clearly, seven and six is not armor piercing. A good note for those of you who will be going up against seven and six at any point in your lives. So why is it banned? Well, you know, I, I don't, yeah, bowls, and, and I don't mean to do the ATF's job for them, but uh, clearly I'm more qualified in being a weapon expert, but I will say that since seven and six is not an armor piercing round, then therefore it should not be banned and therefore it should be able to be imported. Yeah, but again, it's the ATF, okay? Uh, we're not dealing with the, uh, the smartest bunch here. And there's even been word in a new study that actually 100% of ATF agents have wives that have boyfriends. And this is consistent with previous dad advice. So we, yeah, take that into account. Wise words always, Charlie. All right, let's wrap this up. So we learned some very interesting things today. Um, here's some notes for those of you who might be going up against this ammunition. It is, of course, devastating in tissue. Uh, it's clearly been proven, and you should be wearing body armor going up against adversaries who have this. It is easily stopped by typical level three, uh, including level three soft. So that is something to think about. Now, it is also a very capable and a very accurate round. So if you do get your hands on it, understand that uh, it's been noted to perform around two MOA from your typical AK-74, and I've indeed have noted very good accuracy from it. Don't stand next to your buddy who's not wearing armor. Dude, if it hits your buddy, there's a good chance that's going to exit his body and go towards yours. But as always, guys, we're happy to bust myths, to confirm them, and especially to disprove the ATF. That's always a good day in my book, right? That's a wonderful day. Hey, every gun law is an infringement. Don't forget to get out there and practice, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you very much. Final thing for you guys, Charlie, dead advice. Get out there and learn something new, whether it be something to do with camping or medical. And for all those who are stuck in a communist country like Canada or college, learn how to 3D print. Wise words.